Hi everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching this video. My name is Daniel Jacobs. I work at the University of Texas, Austin, and I am the captioning services manager. And today we're going to talk a little bit about our automated transcription speech to text tool. Um, but before we get to that, we are going to talk a little bit about some of the background and context uh, of what we do here at UT. Um, and actually, five years ago, I spoke at the CNI fall meeting, and here's a blurry picture to prove it. Um, then we talked about uh, what was a newly established service and how it was, it was a somewhat unique partnership between uh, central campus, disability services, and the libraries. Uh, as a shared service, it provided some unique opportunities and challenges. Our main priority was and still is to ensure that uh, video content is accessible to our deaf and hard of hearing student communities. On paper, this sounds relatively simple, but uh, prior to the establishment of the service in 2014, many departments and colleges had just been pursuing their own individual solutions uh, with varying degrees of success. And uh, it was a challenge to work with all the relevant parties and wrangle the many systems and tools used to create and manage video and audio content at a, a university of uh, UT size, which is upwards of 50,000 student body. Housing the service under the libraries was actually a strategic and philosophical decision. It provides the opportunity to offer our services to all colleges and departments, regardless of their size or budget. And it aligns philosophically with the library's model of providing access to information, be it for research, instructional needs, or simply the exploration of ideas and intellectual innovation. And not only do video captions and transcripts transcription provide critical access to deaf and hard of hearing individuals, but uh, they also uh, allow for the ability to search and discover content that uh, without the text representation wouldn't be discoverable. And just as libraries approaches, library approaches are changing as technology and campus needs change, we too are looking at new ways to address and keep up with the evolving challenges and opportunities. And one such challenge comes as a result of the pandemic. Uh, this is what uh, was a typical scenes from campus prior to March of this year, large gatherings, um, close quarters. Uh, and as over the years, this is what our captioning and transcription work volume growth looked like, sort of from left to right. Starting in 2014, um, you can see steady but slow growth over the years. And uh, starting in 2012 or March of this year, uh, as the COVID-19 pandemic ramped up, uh, many of the classes, actually all of the classes, ceased in-person meetings and everything shifted online. And this is more uh, what campus looked like after that. Um, Everything shifted online and some instructors chose to use synchronous streaming live video like Zoom meetings and others relied more on asynchronous pre-recorded materials or a combination of both. And as a result, um, this is that same chart, but now expanded out to um, the end of November of this year. And you can see the uh, sharp peak over on the right which represents um, basically starting the summer uh, into the fall semester as um, you know a dramatic increase in video content that needed to be captioned or transcribed um, as a result of the online class offerings increasing. From the beginning, we knew that machine generated transcription and captions would be hopefully part of the equation of our workflows, but up until recently, um, probably in the last few years, the quality just hasn't been good enough to be useful, um, at least for our purposes. We started seriously considering and exploring the different offerings from, um, you know, from like Microsoft, IBM, Amazon, Google, a few years ago, comparing the features and accuracy levels, um, sort of side by side. Uh, and the automated speech recognition is far from being accurate enough to 
rely on exclusively, of course, um, what humans do easily, such as understand the context, the subtext, uh, the meaning, um, and even being able to discern speech from within difficult audio, say with background noise and music or people talking over each other. It's very difficult for even the best AI to do that. Um, and for us, the handcrafted captioning is, is still essential and, and um, really provides the most accurate uh, output. Um, auto transcription and combination of auto transcription and human reviewing or editing intervention is widely used and uh, and we found that in many situations can be faster and more efficient than just typing out by hand, creating from scratch. And the fact that we are embedded in the library's IT group um, is fortunate in that we were able to rely on some excellent um, support from the software development team. Um, they helped us get a completely custom tool off the ground and running in just a few weeks um, from when we decided to really um, make a push. We decided on Amazon, as you can see, uh, AWS Transcribe is the speech to text engine. Um, and Django is a web framework that um, is widely used at UT. And so we um, use that as sort of the scaffolding that um, sort of uh, it holds up the web application and allows the users to interface with um, you know, upload files and, and uh, view the results and download the results. Um, and Box is used, which is like a file sharing service um, is that's used to sort of um, uh, store and um, upload uh, video and audio to and from. And actually at first the focus was, like I said, was more towards external users. We wanted to empower um, faculty, staff, um, content creators to create their own captions. Uh, we hope that giving them the option of an uh, automated draft to work from would make that process easier. And so, uh, you know, and that's kind of where it's at now. It's, it's both a service that's offered to the university, the entire campus, anyone who has a university ID can log in and um, upload content and have it transcribed and download the results. Um, and we also um, are using it internally for our internal student staff to, um, to all do the same and, and um, integrate it into our um, official sort of captioning and transcription workflows. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and um, switch over to screen sharing my browser and I'll give a quick demo of what it actually looks like at this point in time. Alrighty, here we are. This is the uh, job creation screen once you log in. Um, and what we'll do first is just give this a short title. Um, you can just stick me anything like uh, the file name or any other identifier. Just do a CNI list. And here we actually have a few different options. I didn't mention this, but we do provide the ability to transcribe into Spanish. Um, or English, um, just meaning the same language. So if it's a Spanish um, dialogue or Spanish language uh, speech, then it would just be transcribed into Spanish text. And there's some other options here, which is um, include speaker identification. If you want that, um, that just will sort of, uh, it will do its best to identify when different speakers are talking and it sort of labels them in sequence so like the first person you know speaker one two three and um, tries to keep track of it if you know how many people are talking uh, or how many people are represented in the file it's um, it's more accurate if you if you tell it you know if there's just two people or, or more um, so that's what uh, that option is for we'll go ahead and turn this off this test video is going to be just one person speaking so here um, have a demo file. It's one minute. It's a video, uh, a professor, and um, it's just a pretty high quality audio. Um, it's actually produced by a department on campus that um, has a sort of professional studio. They pr produce online classes. So it's kind of like a best case scenario in terms of audio quality and speaker. Um, and so when you first upload the file or first submit the file, you can see that the status is uploaded into the transcription server. 
um, after a, you know, a few seconds or a minute, it'll um, update, um, go through the various statuses of you know, transcription progress and, and all that. So actually I've got another, got the finished file here. I did this earlier, so you can just kind of bypass the, the wait and we can see what it looks like here. Um, the status is completed, have the submitted date and um, some other information. Um, and actually, I'll go ahead and play this back so you can get an idea of what it looks like. You can see the transcript down here. Um, this is just the plain text and you have options for downloading it in various formats. If you download a Word document or a text file, it's just text. If you go for a SRT or VTT file, that is actually a full caption file, you know, timed out and, and segmented and formatted in such a way that's um, optimized for video captions. Um, and then we can play back the video here and see in theory, should see the results. So with all of this and talking about the sociological imagination and applying it, basically what we're trying to get you to do is to step oh, away you know, from your own um, life and everything that's familiar obviously to it's you not perfect, look at something but, um, in a new way. Pretty good. You might have a reflexive way of thinking about and these issues. The main goal of this is just to give someone a, you know, a good start. Um, you know, if it's at in the high 90s of accuracy that, you know, and you have to change a word or formatting every you know once uh you know once uh one out of every 10 words not bad so um that's the idea and um so yeah you can go ahead and download this for example as an srt file and just you know save it and you could upload this to um to youtube or, or you know other video platforms um and coming soon we're actually going to have the ability to um directly from the app go into a separate editing platform um, where you can actually make edits and play the, back the video or audio in real time. So that is the main um, demonstration of this app. Um, go ahead and stop sharing for now. Thanks so much for uh, making it this far. Um, I just wanted to sort of just uh, go over a couple final thoughts related to automated transcription and how we plan to use it here at UT. One of the things that uh, sort of future enhancements wise, um, we are really wanting to take advantage of um, features that are uh, part of speech to text engines, uh, at least especially like uh, cloud-based ones like uh, AWS's or, or others where you can train models, uh, meaning that you um, give it a sort of an accurate set of, of training materials. So if you had a video and um, created, you know, 100% uh, accurate text, you could upload that to the system and the system would learn from that. And you know, at least that's the idea and sort of for at least a particular content type, or maybe it's a, you know, a particular professor, it could um, increase the accuracy going forward for that particular speaker. Another thing we're wanting to take advantage of is sort of like custom word lists. So you can um, provide, you know, up to like, I think like a thousand words for a particular model um, and sort of um, make sure that those words, um, you know, if there's synonyms or homonyms that sound similar, that uh, it, it'll favor the, the particular words that you give it. Um, you know, spellings and like sort of uh, you know, pronouns or, or um, particular terminology, you know, which can be very helpful for uh, STEM material like science and, um, you know, uh, technical content where there's, um, you know, less common terminology used frequently. You would want to, you could give it that term, term list and it would, um, in theory, be more accurate. Um, and then, like I said, we want to really enhance the editing tools. I think that's probably, you know, one of the biggest pain points is going through and making the corrections. Um, you know, there's ways to make it more efficient, like bulk editing and um, um, just making that process of getting around within the text file or within the text as easy as possible. Um, so, yeah, um, again, thanks so much for watching and um, you know stay tuned hopefully uh be able to give another update in the future maybe not uh 
won't take as long as five years, but um, yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about this, uh, you know, what I think is pretty exciting work we're doing. And um, feel free to reach out and if you have any questions or comments or just want to chat about this, this topic, or I'd love to hear about um, what other uh, institutions are doing, um, you know, and how you're handling what I'm sure is a common uh, problem with this increased workload for um, you know, creating accessible video and audio. Um, so yeah, please feel free to reach out. My contact information will be uh, on screen soon. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Bye.